While we're talking the NFL, this is uh, from Tom Telesco, the Chargers GM, talking about the Alliance of American Football. It's a great idea. It has potential to be a nice complement to the NFL. It's a great spot for development league for players. But even aside from that, coaches, front office, officiating, athletic directors, and video equipment, people, public relations, all of that. And that has to ring really nicely in this guy's ears. Please welcome San Diego Fleet quarterback Mike Bercovici. Welcome, Mike, to the KUSI Airwaves. When you see a general manager saying, hey, the dream is alive and well, you say... I say that's exactly why I signed up. I mean, everybody's... They made it very clear that the start of this league that everybody was given this opportunity to go and chance to win a Super Bowl and fulfill every dream that they've ever had their entire life. So that's what this opportunity provides. It's two and a half, three months of football and put the best film you can and, and, it, and everybody sitting in the room achieve their dreams. All right, we're going to roll some video from Saturday. You were inside the Alamo Dome, 27,008. Uh, describe the atmosphere there. It was electric. I've, been in, I've played in a lot of big football games and that absolutely felt like one of them. I mean, especially with the broadcast that they had throughout the entire week. You know, the, the butterflies were rolling. Everybody was excited. I mean, Texas brought some, some, a pretty good fan base out there. So... Uh, I'm excited to see what happens this weekend. Well, this is the in our business, everything is about overnight numbers. This is uh, this has to really make everybody in a suit with the AAF happy. You did a better rating than the Rockets and Thunder, no uh, small accomplishment, twenty-seven thousand and change, and you were alive and well on Twitter. All those things point to a great start. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think that's a kudos to the league. I mean, they, they told us that hey. What better opportunity could you ask for to be playing football on a national stage where the Super Bowl just ended and everybody's still waiting for football? So, you know, everybody still wants more football. So, I mean, that, that, it, that proved their theory right. And there was a signature moment. When I was growing up, there was a show called the ABC Wide World of Sports. Jim McKay announcing an Olympic skier who was coming down the ski jump, fell off, and it became the agony of defeat image. I think this moment might... Mike, you might be the modern-day equivalent of that ski jumper. Please describe the play we're looking at here. Uh, you just didn't see the didn't, didn't see the yeah. guy coming from the uh, wing there, huh? Yeah, no, that's I, I was I was hoping that my highlight would be a, a touchdown pass, but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, had to get blown up. But that's part of the game. I mean, that's that's football at its truest form, I guess. And obviously, you can get the ball a little bit faster there. But well, that's the whole thing. You're probably kicking yourself for is yeah, absolutely. you're, you're concentrating downfield and don't see the guy coming from up. Yeah, those are those are that's part of the rust of playing the position. When did that hurt the most? Uh, I want to say what, what day did we play? Sunday, yeah. Monday, Monday morning. <laughs> that's when it. That's when it, that's when it fires. Uh, uh, you were became a viral. I mean, you were on Sports Center. You were everywhere. Uh, yeah. Probably not the way you wanted to be a viral entity, but yeah. you'll take it, right? I mean, I guess going viral is like it. You know, there's no good or bad way to do it. If you, in, in that in that sense, so at least I can say that it happened. But I mean, shoot, I mean, it, I, I had fun with it. I I think I tweeted something like, "How's your Monday going?" So. <laughs> Which is, you gotta laugh at yourself. Yeah, why not? Oh, it, with that big hit brings us to how the game is different from the NFL. Can you talk a little bit about some of the rule changes and how how long before like the, not having a kickoff? That's gonna be in the NFL win. I think I think right away. Truly, I mean, I think there's so many. Not only is it a safety thing, but it gets it gets the game going. I mean, there's so much dead time when you do kick kick off through the end zone and you get the referee's got to spot the ball. Might as well line up and play some offense or defense and get right to it and. I mean the the overtime rule that wasn't that I don't think it was showcased this this weekend in, in all the games, but it's going to be truly special because instead of kicking a, a kickoff or an onside kick with an eight percent chance, there's it's going to be fourth and twelve. Which is a how, what is that? Statistic? The success rate is much higher than eight percent. So that that's yeah. going to be cool. And then the, talk about the, how the blitzing rule is a little bit different. Yeah, I mean the 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 offense obviously has a little bit of a disadvantage with just getting together for a month. So they designed some rules where they can only bring five players at a time. Um, and there's certain ways to identify who's coming. And, and it allows our offensive line unit to pick it up faster. And they can't bring that fire zone blitz. That, that might take your head off, too. <laughs> All right. So you got pulled in the fourth quarter. It happens to every athlete out on the planet. Uh, Coach Martz, explain the switch here. I want to get your reaction to it. Mike's just not ready. You know, Mike's going to be a real good player. Um, Mike has, Mike has not been in this kind of system. Phil has. I had Phil in the NFLPA game. He's got a little bit longer to go. Uh, he'll be all right. Uh, we just he's just not there yet. So that's kind of where we are. So he's he explained the system. We did it on our Facebook Live interview. Check it out. But just give us a standard play. It's a lot of verbiage in your play in your play call. Give us one. Yeah. 
<laughs> Come on, just one. Yeah, I'll tell you the same one. Okay. Empty, you know, empty to trigger right, gone right, fish, wrap, Z squirrel, F A. So you're basically there, you're telling how Speak we're gonna line up. Spell. We're gonna shift, motion, and then a route for everybody. Yep, absolutely. So like a 20 second play call. Yeah, no, it's how, it's... how long before... It's like learning a language. Absolutely. It's like Chinese sometimes. So how long before you could speak fluent? Fluent marts. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think you can ever be fluent in this. I mean, you're always constantly learning, but it takes years and years and years of practice. I mean, this is something that we just started learning in January. And at this point, week by week, we're adding more and more and more, and, and the language gets tougher and tougher, but it's our job to kind of decipher and, and, and think. He always talks about he wants us to be the offensive coordinator on the field and think what he's thinking, and sometimes he only wants to spit out half the play, and we finish the rest. Very cool. Uh, speak to the kid. Every kid out here who has been in your shoes, had a rough outing, and now has to wait their turn again, speak about the mentality of being ready to be the next man up. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what football is all about. It's... It's, it's a short memory, especially at the quarterback position, but at all positions. You can make your best play. You can throw a touchdown. You can throw an interception. The next play has to be the same amount of enthusiasm, same amount of confidence in yourself. And when you look in the mirror at the end of the night, at the end of the game, you've got to say that you put it all out there on the field and, and you did all that you can. You were drafted, by, or you came to the Chargers in 2016. Yeah. So you spent a year here in San Diego. You were a San Diego Charger. You were an L.A. Charger. Yeah. Can you talk about, as an L.A. kid, did you prefer the L.A. Chargers? <laughs> the, what, 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 the facility is nicer up there, is it not? Yeah, no, I mean, I, the first football game I ever went to in my life was a Raiders-Chargers game down here at, at the old Qualcomm Stadium. So it was pretty cool for me to be a part of an organization that I grew up watching, grew up idolizing. And it was unique to go from the transition from San Diego to Los Angeles. And, you know, they made a couple upgrades to the facilities and all that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a job and you want to be there during the regular season no matter what the facilities look like. So it was fun for me to just be a part of both of those teams, um, 2016, 2017, and and be around a franchise quarterback like Philip Rivers. Obviously, you can learn a lot there. All right, so folks, big home opener this Sunday night. Uh, the number to beat is 27,800. Mike wants you to be there, so please tune in for ticket information. Go to aaf.com. The, legend the legends are coming. The legends are coming. The fleet will be hosting Sunday night. Uh, tonight on the ASR, a bunch of boys play off basketball. And then just one quick reminder, Landon Donovan will be our in-studio, or will be our live guest in the 6 o'clock hour. Hope you tune in for that. On behalf of Mike Berkovici, thank you for watching the KSI News at 5. The KSI News at 6 o'clock is about to begin.